Oh, good. Now I can get in. I'm in. I'm in. But where is everyone else? And now I'm getting a feedback. All right, so let's close this one. But where is everyone? Okay, I'm going to put a note in Facebook. Let's see, where's the link? Well, someone made it in. Good, Ozma. Is your microphone working? Ozma, Ozma, paging Ozma. Uh, maybe, do you have a slow connection today? Maybe you should stop your video feed. I think you have a slow connection. There you go. Okay. So, okay, Ozma, I'll wait. Hello, Bashar. Where are you from? Bashar? Bashar? Paging Bashar. Hello, Anna. Click on the um, join button. <laughs> Everyone's having a tough time getting started today. I couldn't hardly get in the class myself. Bashar, your microphone's not working. <laughs> so we have three people here, and nobody can speak except me. Hey, Igor. Hello, George. And where are you from, Igor? I'm from Republic of Moldova. Do you know this country? Republic of what? Moldova. Moldovia? Oh, Moldova. That's Moldova. Okay, but I think we, I think in America we call it Moldovia. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, it's not correct. Moldova. Yeah. Moldova. Yes. Oh, Anna, we, we always give women 
uh, extra attention here because if we can get the women to come, the guys will surely follow. So, Anna, you'll have to get a microphone one of these days. And Faisal, uh, click on the Join Now button. Get in here. Let's see. Asma, are you back yet? Bashar, is your microphone working yet? Where are you from, teacher? Uh, I prefer coach. You remember the George part. Uh, I'm, uh, hello, Bashar. Uh, you're breaking up. Yes, some. You may you may want to turn off your video. I think you have a slow connection. And Bashar, you'll want to um, mute your microphone when you're not speaking because we're getting a lot of background noise off of your microphone. Thanks. All right, so Igor asked where I'm from. Uh, the United States, uh, not too far from Chicago, in a place called Fort Wayne. It's on some rivers. Oh. But I was born in New York. All right. It's five o'clock in the morning in uh, Chicago, yes? Uh, six o'clock now. Yep. All right. Six o'clock is in New York. But in Chicago it's five o'clock. Well, yeah, okay, you're right. Chicago. I'm 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 in the New York time. Okay. Jose You're in, you're in Illinois, but you're in New York time? Indiana. Indiana, the next state to the east towards Oh, you said near Chicago. Yeah, uh, near Chicago. Probably a two hour drive. Oh, but in state Indiana, yes? Yes. Ah, okay. All right. Mo Bach. It's been a while. How are you today? Hi, teacher. Hi, everyone. I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. And where are you from? I'm from Algeria. Algeria. Yeah. All right. I think we've got enough. Now, for me, vocabulary, a lot of people think that they have to know more and more vocabulary to be better at English. And truthfully, that's not real. Um, certainly basic vocabulary, but most of our communication does not use that many words. Um, it's much more important to become good at the words you know. As a matter of fact, I think poetry um, and songwriting would be a better practice for people than vocabulary. Being able to play with and use like colors in a painting but using a few words to do many things with. Oh, so Anna's from Germany. Wo wohnen Sie auf Deutschland, Anna? But Anna does not have a microphone. So, what, what I prefer to do when we're learning vocabulary is pick something that we're interested in. And then only read, only speak in English when you're focusing on that. So whatever you love or that you are passionate about is how you should learn your English, not grammar, not long lists of words. I don't know that town. Okay. So uh, let's go into our screen sharing. And what I like to use is a thing called the visual dictionary. So we're always using and let me give you the link. I'll give you the links as we pick something. You're always learning in context. So this is what we're looking at. And let's see, general categories of the earth. Let's see. Uh, you guys have to vote. Um, astronomy, earth, uh, plants, animals, humans, food and kitchen, house and housing. Uh, put right in the chat box what interests you. And if we get two people to agree, that's what we will work on today. Hey, Slim. Hi, teacher. 
gardening and farming, clothing. If there's women, communications. Communications. Any other votes? We yeah. also have oh, personal accessorizing, arts and architecture. We have one vote for communication, transportation. Anyone like cars? Energy, science, society, and sports. All right, so we have one vote for communication. Any other votes? You can put it in the chat box or say it. You're kidding me. Nobody has any interests. <laughs> science, mommy. Small society. Vote in the chat box so I can be sure of what your vote is for. <laughs> No other votes? We need someone to vote one more time for either society or communications. Now, if there was a woman choosing, we would go wherever she wants to go. No other votes? Two votes for communications, I see. Okay, <laughs> Slim, Slim, you're the gentleman today. You gave in. All right, let's look closer at communications. Now, we have general communications and office automation. I assume general communications. Now we have a lot of choices. Radio, studio and control room, writing instruments, newspaper, topography, television, microphones, um, mm -hmm. telephones, satellites, more satellites, more satellites, uh, portable sound systems, photography, public postage and postal networks, stereo systems, punctuation marks, ooh, boring, mm -hmm. symbols, boring, Dis discography, sound recording systems. All right, need another vote. Of those, what are your interests in communications? We'll get there. Vote in the chat box. Telephone, radio, TV. Yes, telephone. In the chat box so I know telephone, which. Telephone, telephone. I agree. I want to see it in the chat okay. box. <laughs> Wait a minute, teacher. Because otherwise, someone could be voting twice by changing the voice. <laughs> We have one vote for TV. Any other votes? It's a girl. Then we choose TV. <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't. She doesn't have a microphone today, so. Oh. It... <laughs> no other votes. Telephone. Any other telephones? Wireless or regular telephone? I'm gonna Both say. of them. Uh, Wireless. All right, we're finally getting somewhere. Answering machines, a complete set, cellular telephone, headsets, general telephones. If we press the middle one, what will show us? That's just the category we're in. Why they did so, so... To make it visual. To make it graphical. I mean, they can uh, in this category uh, communication by telephone to include all of this, not so detailed. All right. Not so much words, I think. All right. So let's let's start with the examples, and I'll get. Let's let me go. Let me show you how to find these same things now. I'm going to switch the screen sharing. To the the website and we're going to look at this website because I think you guys will want to use it more often oh that's not going to work let me try this I can do this <laughs> I'm still getting used to get hangouts so I'm still 
trying to figure out what I'm doing half the time. All right, so we start at the, the home site. Did I give you that already? I'll give it to you one more time for the visual dictionary. There's some excellent graphics, especially if you like um, technical English. But let me go back into the screen. All right. And I think I'll make this a little bigger so you guys can see it. All right. On the left side is the index. And we started in communications, I think. Yeah, and then under communications, we have choices. So it's a little bit different than what I have on my desktop. But somewhere in here, hopefully there's telephone. That's hard to find there. Let me go back up to the top and look underneath the general category. Oh, it doesn't seem to let us do that. We'll get there. I think in the future I'll pick a, a general subject area before the class starts. It's just that I'd like to leave it open for what you guys are interested in. Okay, communication by telephone. And then within that, oh shoot, that was the general category again. So let's go to the bottom. And so right now we're looking at examples of telephone numbers. See, there's several of them. And so that's where we get started. But I wanted to show you there's a few things you can do here. Every time you see a a little speaker icon, it will pronounce the word for you. And so at the top we have the parts of a phone, a pay phone. And then underneath each of those words is a definition, if, if available, and you can click to hear the word. All right, so I'm going back now to my desktop one I can do this <laughs> we'll get we'll get there honest we'll get there all right and then we'll let you guys describe the items so a pay phone and that's still seen in the United States but with um, cell phones or mobiles uh, we don't we don't see them as much anymore. Almost everyone has a phone these days, so there's very few pay phones. At the very top, we have a coin slot. We have a display, which is probably a digital display. Slim, I'm getting some feedback of my voice from your system. Um, a push button device, a card reader for taking your payment. A handset, uh, a cord, and this one's an armored core, and a corn, a coin return. Normally we call it a slot, corn return slot, like the coin slot at the top. All right, that's rather boring. But Slim, go ahead and describe the phone for us. What is the question, teacher? Uh, just describe the phone. Describe what you see. Use the words that you wish that are on the screen. Pay phones are not used very much in America anymore. 
But if you come across one, at the top is a coin slot where you put money in. There is also a card reader for using a credit card. Uh, maybe, we can, maybe we can uh, see it in the jail. <laughs> see it in the where? Oh, museum? Jail. No. In the jail. Oh, yes! <laughs> Slim, you, you know. Uh, I wonder where Slim's at. <laughs> That's a good point. That's one of the only places you would see it. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, they have uh, to uh, kill someone to pay uh, for uh, to put the coin in the coin slot. Yeah. All right. This one's a rather simple one. Does anyone else want to discuss anything about a payphone? No. <laughs> that was pretty sure. Let's look at the next types of phones. Okay, we have. A call director or the um, like the office operator would use this type of phone. We have a push button phone. What do you think the old type of phone was called before push button? When you had to use that circular item to dial a number. Yeah. That was called a rotary <laughs> dial phone. Rotary dial phone. You guys probably don't remember those. I do. I uh, I remember. I, I have seen one. Or two. Yeah. In the museum? <laughs> no. <laughs> In some administration uh, 10 years ago. <laughs> Maybe okay. more. And then okay. a cordless phone. And you don't even see these very much anymore inside of a home. All right. So... And, uh, people from United States uh, usually... Uh, use cell phones. They uh, disconnect the landline phones because uh, they do not want to pay um, extra money for that. Is this true or not? True. I do not have a landline. I have my internet connection, which I can use Skype with, and then I do have a cell phone. What do you, Igor? What do we? What does Europe call a cell phone? They don't call them cell phones there. Sorry, sorry. Could you repeat that? Europe. In Germany, mobile phone. Mobile, yeah, mobile yes. or mobile phones. Yep. But uh, cell phone is the same name. Yep, they are the same. They are the same. What are the new types of phone calls that also have computer browsing capability? Smartphone. Smartphone, yep. Okay, faxes are still used. Asma brought up a fax machine, and that would be under the office um, machines. All right, so Igor, tell us the three types of phones you might, uh, regular phones you still might see in an office. Yes. Tell us the, about the three types. Uh, what Three types what? The phones, uh, where we can see? Just describe these three that are here. Oh. Uh, first, first type is cordless phone. This is a phone with buttons. You can speak without um, a cord. Yes. Yes. Good. A cord. Uh, so you are mobile. You can speak about uh, 100 meters with this phone without cord, and you can receive messages on the answering machine if you have this option. Also, you can see who called you on the display. Wow, of this one. A lot. And uh, also, you can block people who call you to do not what call do you. you. Think, what do you think the difference between a call director phone and a push button telephone is? Call director telephone is um, a telephone usually used in companies. Um, so uh, on this phone can call many people and uh, who answer the phone uh, that operator for example or secretary can transfer a call to uh, people who to okay. people who is uh, uh, who to whom uh, this call are how, how to say to whom uh, this call are 
to direct the phone, uh, to direct the call. Yes, to direct a call uh, to uh, people to whom this call is uh, what? Yeah, and also it, we would generally that would generally be the responsibility of the receptionist. Uh, yes, but or secretary, depending on the size. Uh, Faisal brought up that there are still two different major types of phones, analog and digital. And um, I think that that's more familiar with people as far as clocks. What's the difference between an analog clock and a digital clock, Igor? Analog is uh, where we see, you can see the... Um, the um, hands? What? The hands of the clock. Yes, hands of the clock and uh, figures are from 1 to 12. And uh, digital is from uh, 1 to 24 uh, okay. hours, and uh, is digital, so you can see these scans. And uh, he works from batteries, or I don't know, yeah. electricity source. Okay, and um, Slim, yes. uh, he brought up that a digital clock would have 24 digits, or for 24 hours. What would that be in the United States? Would a digital clock have 24? Uh, no, I think uh, it's uh, 11. 11. Uh, 12, yeah, 12. 12, yes, yes. Yeah. Maybe we, when we start with 0, it's uh, become 11 plus 0. I don't know if it's correct or not. Because the 0 and the dollar. Uh, and the eleven, uh, the twelve are uh, conceded or like that. Yeah, in America, we pretty much call that a military time that uses twenty-four hours. Europe uses a twenty-four hour clock, but in America, if you wanted to say, uh, "Meet me at thirteen hundred," that would be military time for a twenty-four hour clock. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. I uh, the problem that I see in some uh, so they say uh, 8 p.m. and 5 p.m. That's why I don't right. know. Uh, right. So I don't. It's another Latin word, but I think it's anti something, post something um, for a.m. and p.m. Oh, okay. All right. So now we have a smartphone. Let's see who's up. Asma, do you want to describe what you're seeing there and tell us about a smartphone? Um, do you hear me? Yes. Hello? Do you hear me? Yes, hello. Yes. Uh, so it has a... It has a screen. A screen. Or a touch screen, I guess. Possibly, okay. Uh, can call, you can browse internet. Uh, what else? Well, use the words that you see here. Does this phone have an external or an internal antenna? Uh, External or internal? Exter external. Yeah. External. And then you talked about the screen, but what's the more common word that we would use? For the screen? Yeah. It's actually um, a display screen. Yeah. Display screen. Mm. All right. I'm. I'm not. Let's see if we can find. Who was talking about the fax machine? There's no uh, external antenna, I guess. Oh. Well, this one did happen to have an external antenna. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's my but uh, she's speaking about the fax machine. 
she in here? Yes. Oh, asthma. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get Mo Bach up here. Mo, would you describe a fax machine and tell us uh, what you know about fax machines? I will try to describe since I have no knowledge. Uh, I have no knowledge about it, so um, I try to read. Okay, it's that's fine. Ba it's, basi it's basically uh, a machine that can receive uh, normal telephone calls and uh, receive uh, even uh, more uh, information that can print. Uh, in a paper, it's uh, usually supplied by electricity, and it has function keys. Well, let's not go through all this, and some control keys, stars key, and I don't know what else I can do with a fax yeah, machine. This part. But, yeah, yeah. Not, not too many people use them. It's still convenient. Mm -hmm. You'll still see some businesses, professional businesses, using it because it effectively makes a copy of a, a simple document that someone might use. So let's see if I was to describe my fax machine. The first thing you want to do uh, is uh, load paper in the, oh, the paper would be inside. Okay, so you would place your document on the very top tray, this, the send document tray. Oh, no. You would use the document side, the right side, with the paper guides to feed your um, document in. On the opposite side of the fax machine, it will come out in the sent document tray when it's finished scanning. If you were received a fax, it would come just below that. On the left side of the fax machine, there are several key keyboard areas. The main control keys are where you would put in the phone number and possibly a choice of um, uh, functions. But there are also special function keys where you can simply make a copy of a document instead of uh, faxing it to someone else. And we have a start key which will actually start the process. And if you do have a problem, you can press the reset key. All right, so let's see. Who wants to try describing a fax uh, machine? Uh, George, it seems you receive and send fax uh, every hour. Yes, but I don't know how to use it. Can you do, tell me? No, no, no. I mean, you so detailed to explain to us oh. with, uh, with uh, I was making it up. I was making it up. No, no, no. It seems like you every hour one fax receive and uh, uh, and send, and you read all instructions from fax machine. <laughs> I'm very old. I when I was in the military, one of the places. I was at was in the Pentagon, the big place in Washington, D.C. There was two fax machines in the Pentagon when I was there. And we would run upstairs, with, you know, in the morning just to watch the fax machine work. It was so cool. <laughs> That's how old I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Our, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to try to get back into our... Uh, there it is. And where did you work or now work? Um, I was in the military, so... No, no, I mean um, after military, or, or you, or all your life worked Mostly in Mostly surveying and engineering, like civil engineering. Oh, okay. Related to what, engineering? Uh, well, surveying is outside measuring the land, mapping and things like that, and with engineering, things that were related to that, mostly um, civil works, uh, roads, um, sewer systems, water systems, things like that. Cool. Okay. How to use an answering machine. If you guys see something you like, we'll stop. Here's a, a general office. 
as soon as you see something you want to talk about, type or say something. Uh, types of filing furniture. No interest. Types of cabinets. Types of racks. Maybe we should jump out of here and find a better area to look in. Yes. <laughs> yes, jump out. All right. How about sports? There's mostly guys here today. All right. What's your favorite sport, guys? Oh, don't say soccer. Chess. Cheerleaders? No, chess, chess. I prefer cheerleaders. <laughs> Type that type that in the chat box for me. I didn't quite understand. Chairs. Do you know what is chess? Chess. Yes. Chess. All right. We should have games. The game of chess. <laughs> Unless you're talking about women, and then you mispronounced it. Chests. <laughs> oh, chess. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Darts, roulette, slot machines, soccer table. Dice, bingo, board games. Backgammon, chess. Oh, do we want to look at the chess pieces first? All right. We'll let people take turns. Um, six. Oh, who said chess? We'll let you start. Was that you, Igor? No. Who was interested in chess? Slim, you? <laughs> oh, uh, oh. <laughs> it's ego. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, me. Okay, we have six six playing pieces in the game of chess. A pawn, which is the most um, pieces. In, and the least value can do the least harm. A bishop, a rook, a knight, a king, and a queen. All right. Asma, 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 would you describe this? Yes. Or tell me the six playing pieces for chess. Um, a king, queen, uh, a bishop, I guess. Bishop. <laughs> Wait, I can't see. Um, it's not clear. I can. Uh, All right. Let's see if we can get you the um, link then. Let me go back to. I'm going to get you the link. So it's going to take. Um, Igor, would you go ahead and describe uh -huh. the six pieces while I'm getting that? Yes. Um, the most important piece uh, in chess is king, because king is uh, the main piece of game. Is it because you... he's the man, or is no, it... no, main, main, main. Okay, main. Much main. I agree. <laughs> main piece of uh, the game. So if you um, uh, someone, uh, some figure attack, uh, some piece attack uh, king, you should, uh, you have to. Defense, your king. Uh, second important piece is queen, because queen is multifunctional. Uh, queen can go in all directions, to move in all directions. Third uh, uh, important piece is rook, because rook can go in two directions, uh, horizontal and vertical. The Next uh, important is knight because knight can go. I don't know how to Weird, explain this. Yeah, L shape. Yeah. Okay. Yes, L shape. And next is bishop because bishop ma can go. How can go bishop? Diagonal. Diagonal. Yes, diagonal. Diagonal. And pawn is basic figure. Uh, is basic. Uh, a piece on the table because okay. we have many pawns and they can go straight ahead only. All right, Asma, did, did you find the uh, link?
Yeah, I found okay. it. I just opened it. Okay. All right. Oops, we don't want checkers. Although checkers is the same board game. All right, so Igor just described the movements of different pieces. Uh, so we have vertical movement, mm -hmm. and these are a good term for uh, describing many um, things. Diagonal movement, a square or L-shaped movement, and horizontal movements. All right, so Igor described those. Mo, do you think you can describe which um, plane pieces you would use for the different movements? Yes, uh, the knight basically moves only in uh, an L shape movement, which is the square movement, yeah, in the, in the grass. Horizontally, uh, horizon, horizontal movements and vertical movements are uh, for the, the rock. Uh, the, the queen too can move uh, in a, a horizontal or vertical movement, and the queen too, but only one uh, how to call it? Is it a home or case? This uh, little squares in uh, white and black. How to call them? Uh, you, well, it, it depends on your position. But the diagonal we were talking about for the bishop? No, I'm talking about the, the squares, the little squares in black and white. Each one of them. Uh, I guess you would call that a cell or the... The checkerboard? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's a cell. Well, uh, for the diagonal movement, it's for the bishop. The queen, too, can move in a diagonal movement, and uh, the king can move in a diagonal movement, but only for one cell, not more. Uh, for, for, the, uh, for the pawns, only when they attack, another piece can move in a diagonal movement. Not in oh, normal so movements, yeah. The pawns have to move straight forward in yeah. one direction only <laughs> unless they're attacking, then they can, can move. they move both or they can only attack in the diagonal? Uh, they can uh, only uh, attack in the diagonal, uh, left or right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Who else wants to describe the chess pieces and using these terms? Praneet, we haven't heard from you. Where are you from, Praneet? It's the same description. Maybe we switch the team, uh, theme and uh, something else. Someone will describe. I think, well, checkers, I don't know of anything else that would use those, but let's go ahead and see what the next game is to look at. Checkers is a simpler game, and we can try describing that. Slim, do you want to try to describe checkers? Do you know checkers? Yes. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, checkers is um, um, it's, um, a game with the board that uh, we have uh, says in black and white, switch it. Uh, the checker uh, can move only in uh, diagonal, and uh, if he... Uh, if it uh, state one uh, other checker uh, from uh, the other side, uh, he must uh, jump in to uh, to uh, take it. Okay, so you're describing this to take this piece. The red checker would jump the black yes. checker to take it, and it can only go in one direction towards the opposite side. Okay. Anyone else want to describe checkers? Describe the game of checkers? I think it's more of a, considered more of a children's game, but it can be very sophisticated for a master player. Yes. Yes, it is. There's no uh, the game called, called game or something like that. Like uh, Billot or... There's so many games these days. They're just, <laughs> there's thousands and thousands of board games. 
All right. Does anyone know Go? No. I don't know this game. Me too. I don't know. All right. We'll look at the next one. Ooh. Major Motions of Go. That looks like a strategy game. Snakes and Ladders looks like a children's game. Yes. <laughs> uh, although we do have some good um, standard game descriptors here. We have a game board. We have spaces that they play on. We have a start. There should be an end. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in this game. A die or dice. One, one of these is a die. Two of them is a dice. And we have tokens or playing pieces. Anyone want to describe playing a children's game with some of those terms? No. It's, uh, let's switch the theme to another, uh, not game. Not interesting. General sports? Social, sociality, what Slim society. proposed. Society, all yes. right. What Slim proposed first time. We have safety. We have weapons. We have politics, religion, education, economy, justice, city, and health. Politics. 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 Where was that at? Was that a choice? Yeah. All right, we're in the category of politics, ladies and gentlemen. We have heraldry. Oh, that's British. And we have flags. Flags. Flags it is. Mm -hmm. Category flags. All right, let's start in the Americas. Mm -hmm. All right, who wants to describe the countries of Central America? And their flags it can be something just as simple as colors. Anyone? <laughs> Nobody. Who can find what's wrong with this map? There is a wrong flag on this map. What country is not part of America? Denmark. Yeah. What is that landmass called up there? Part of Alaska. Alaska. Is it Alaska? No, not this one. Alaska. Greenland. Yeah, Greenland. Greenland. Oh. All right. No discussion on the Americas. We'll look at the next one. About South America. Anyone want to describe? The countries or flags of South America. I think politics didn't do very well. Let's see what the other choices in politics were. Heraldry, no. All right, guys. We got enough guys here. Weapon systems. <laughs> now we have old Roman. No, no. <laughs> armor system. Hand grenades, bows and crossbows, tanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, go All right. Components of a tank. This looks like a main battle tank. There are light tanks, there are fast tanks, there are heavy tanks. A main battle tank is a heavy tank. You would not take it into um, mountains, you would not take it into swamps. You would not even take it across the countryside that much. You'd want to be in flat country, maybe in deserts or in built up areas. All right, who wants to describe some parts of a tank? Uh, can I? Yeah, who's I? Is that Slim? Yes. Okay, Slim. Uh, a tank. Is uh, this tank is uh, working in truck tank that helps him to move in uh, uh, desert and uh, sand uh, 
without uh, not unstable sand, I think. Yeah, bad for unstable sand. It's easy to get stuck. Go ahead. Yes, uh, he had uh, a huge cannon uh, with the fume extractor. When uh, the shot is done, uh, the fume extractor. Uh, uh, how to say it? <laughs> It, it, it empties the tube, empties the cannon of fumes. Why do you think that would be important? Uh, because if uh, it would be back to the the I, what's the name of it? Turret. The turret. Yes. It if it will be back, it will uh, close. Uh, it will be uh, toxic for the the soldier in. Yeah, it could be. I'm thinking that possibly they could shoot faster if the fumes are vented. The other thing they often have with the fume extractor is what they call muzzle flash. When a cannon fires, you get a large flash at the at the end of the barrel, and that would give your position away. So maybe it has something to do with that. So go ahead, Slim. What other yes. parts do you wish to talk about? It's always connected uh, to, uh, with the an antenna to the the camps uh, to have uh, the coordination when and uh, to stop it all to let them shooting the enemies. Yeah, coordinated attacks. Yep. Coordinated. Yes. Uh, it uh, it's made for the armored plate that's protect uh, protected from uh, shooting uh, enemy by uh, uh, how to say, uh, guns or uh, ever. Yeah, definitely small arms. This armor plate on the side, I think, is more to protect the tracks from being hit by fire. Yes. The, where do you think the strongest armor is on a tank? A cannon. The cannon. Well, it would be at the front. And even the shape of the armor on the turret, that angle, helps to deflect the um, shots that are fired at it. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to describe any other parts? No. <laughs> so much. <laughs> All right. Anyone else want to talk about tanks? All right. We'll go back and... Oh, how about Stone Age weapons? Who wants to describe three typical Stone Age weapons? <laughs> Who hasn't gone yet for a while? Momen, Momen, do you want to describe these three Stone Age weapons? Uh, actually, I can't. I, can't uh, I, I prefer to be a listener in this class. Uh, the, the subject is uh, a little complex uh, to me. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. All right, Mo, you're up. Describe some Stone Age weapons. Okay, for the first one, the flint arrow head is quite familiar. I'm quite familiar with it because. Uh, here in the desert, in Algeria desert, we have a lot of these, and we, you can find them in the what Sahara area. What is flint? Area. Is flint a type of plastic? Uh, it's a stone, kind of stone. And how a do rock. you make a flint arrowhead? Well, I don't know how they managed to do that in that uh, era, but I think uh, by hitting uh, stones against each other or something like that. Yeah, like chipping. Like carving. Yeah, like carving. Mm. But with stone, mm. I think you would call it chipping away. C H I P, chipping. All right. Yes, and it's obvious how they used it. With it's an arrow with uh, using the wood to make an arrow. For the knife, it's uh, simple. But for the last one, the polished stone hand axe, I don't know how they uh, used it. They throw it. 
to the address, to the enemy. I think. Do, do you think it's uh, it attached to uh, a piece of wood or something, and they use it uh, in the battle? No, uh, I think yeah, they throw it uh, only uh, without the pure other pieces. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. They don't, didn't need to polish it then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but but they wanted to show off for the women. So that's why they polished it, so that they could pick up more women. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, if, uh, maybe it's polished uh, uh, naturally. Not uh, they don't do sure. that. Sure. Uh, they, they are they weapons. Why, why do you polish your car, Slim? <laughs> to pick up women. It doesn't help the car. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have a car. <laughs> then it I, come the, naturally polished. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's look at the next category. Ooh, a Roman legion. Who wants to try this one? Osma, are you up for talking about the well-dressed Roman legionnaire and the attractiveness of a dress on a man? <laughs> Um, how many of you are Christians? There's a chapter that describes a, um, a Roman dress. It's <laughs> Romans chapter 16, and it describes the armor of God, and this covers most of those items. All right, so are we back to Mo? Mo. Yes. 